This is Russ Anderson with a tutorial on lens distortion workflows. And the workflow I'm going to show here is one that produces undistorted images as the final result, either for distribution or for further effects work. So we're going to start with a shot that's from a helicopter using an XHJ1 camcorder. And it looks like a nice reasonable shot, so I'm going to go and solve it. And then go and set up a coordinate system using a couple of points on the the ground there on this uh, track around the field and you know so far everything looks good we've got a error around six tenths of a pixel but let's go take a look in the perspective view and you see that there's something kind of funny going on that the perspective lines of the ground plane grid don't really match up with the field they're parallel along the length of the field here but not across the width and that's telling us that the perspective doesn't match up right. And that might do, be due to some tracking data that's bad, but here the tracking data is really quite fine. And really what's going on is that we're seeing an effect due to lens distortion. So I can go over to the lens panel and turn on the button to uh, calc have Synthize calculate the distortion and update this solve. And now you see that everything matches up a lot better. Uh, I can go and drop something in to the scene. You know, I drop a, a box along the field and let's just turn off the shadow so we can line it up a little. You know, when I go and do that, now you'll see that I've got it lined up so that the perspective is matching, you know, the line of the box is matching the sideline of the field as well as matching along the width of the field. And so that's saying that the perspective matches up properly. So this is a good shot to be able to see what's, what's happened, but the lens distortion causes the same sort of problem whether you have these kinds of lines available or not. So now I've got an image that's been cleaned up. We know what the, the distortion is in it, basically, uh, and now we want to get rid of it. So we'll go back to the main summary panel and now we're going to click this Lens Workflow button that says what, what we want to do. And we're going to select the undistorted image workflow. That's what we want to produce as a result. And click the button here. And if you see there was a small zoom that was applied right now and Synthize moved the distortion from the calculation spot into the image preprocessor. So now you know we have an updated image here that that doesn't have that distortion in it. And we can go and immediately save it away. And I've, I've set up the file name for that already. Um, we'll just save that image sequence back away. And now we may want to go and do some further tracking work here, or set up some additional meshes or whatever. So at this point, we might go and replace the image that we've got here that's being generated by the image preprocessor with the version that we just saved onto disk. So um, when I ask Synthize to change the uh, images that it's using, it's going to ask me, you know, what's up? And we're going to tell it, oh, we want to go use some that were coming out of this distortion workflow before. And now when we go and do that, Synthize reset the image preprocessor. Uh, so that it's no longer applying that undistortion. And everything still stays perfectly locked up, but now we're running off of the saved version of the images that we just produced instead of the uh, modified originals. So if we want to just back that up for a second, uh, I'm going to undo that change images, and we'll just look at what went on in the image preprocessor. And all of this stuff you can do directly by hand. Those other buttons just make it make it easier. Here on the uh, adjustment page in the image preprocessor you'll see that zoom value and on the lens panel here here's the distortion value that was earlier calculated as part of the solve. So you know what's what's going on is that that, that distortion has been removed which kind of you know bends the image out a bit and Synthize generated a little warp or a little uh, zoom so that you know, we still have a complete frame available for our further work. 
So that's what this workflow is about. Once you've gone and done this process to produce a cleaned up set of images, that's what you're going to use for your further work, whether it's tracking, whether it's adding 3D effects, or whatever else. Thanks.